Hello, PSD. So most of you probably know me. I'm Matt Glibaugh. I'm making a bit of an introductory video to uh, introduce myself as the digital responder for PSD. I think I got that title right, digital responder. Um, so I will be, I guess, kind of leading triage in terms of solving issues related to online classes this quarter. So IT and learning tech are understandably kind of overwhelmed. So for issues related to uh, what's the best way to do this? How do I use this new tool? Can you suggest the right software for me to do this thing? Um, I am going to be the first point of contact um, for everyone in PSD. Uh, I don't have all the answers, so I may uh, go on to send you on to other people. But the idea is if I can answer the question, then that saves uh, learning tech and other places that are way over way oversubscribed from getting too bombarded um, In this role, I'll be available to answer emails I'll probably try and lead something like office hours or perhaps something like uh, Maybe just like a digital meeting between interested people that we can all come to and share some ideas uh, I'll be in touch about some of the details there, but Going forward, right, if you have issues related to figuring out like kind of what software to use or how best to do something related to teaching your online course, I will be your first point of contact. Um, I will not be bombarding you with tons of resources. I feel like you are getting enough resources from enough other directions, um, apart from making this video. So this introductory video is kind of a bit of a meta discussion about some things you can do to get started. So I actually recommend that when you are starting up your course that maybe you record a video like this to introduce the course and talk about uh, what your role in the course is going to be and what the course is going to go like. And there's a couple good reasons for this. One is that we're really looking to build some sort of personal connection uh, between students and instructors. It's when you're never going to see your students, right? Doing something like an introductory video can be really valuable. Um, it's a time saver. Like it's I'd probably faster for me to record this video than it is to write up a multi-page announcement. It's more impactful, right? How many three-page announcements have you gotten today about this? And this is a little bit different. Um, students are gonna be in the same boat. Uh, you can also use something like this to set up expectations and norms for the class. So students are not ready for this, right? They don't know what to expect. So if you can record a video introducing yourself and describing what your class is gonna be like, right? Then they have a better idea of your expectations and they'll be better set up to meet those expectations faster. So I super encourage doing a bit of an introductory video for your course. Um, you may notice I put this video up on YouTube. Obviously not every video is right for YouTube, but if you can put something up on YouTube, there are some advantages. One is that if you look at the bottom, you can turn on subtitles for this video. I did not make those subtitles. YouTube has an algorithm to make its own subtitles. They are pretty good. They're not perfect, but I mean, considering there's zero effort on your part, they can be really nice to make your video more accessible. Um, you can also speed up or slow down this video. So students who really understand what's going on, or you can speed me up and I can be talking at 2x speed or like half x speed or whatever you need. So there's a lot of good accessibility options kind of baked into YouTube. You can turn comments off or you can leave them on and make them part of some sort of follow-up assignment or something like that. Um, in terms of making videos, my experience is that you want to try and keep them to five minutes, um, maybe up to 10, but the shorter videos, the more impactful they're going to be. You really need to resist the urge to make a two hour video. Students won't retain the whole thing. I mean, with the video, students can go back in and watch parts that they need to rewatch. But the shorter the video, the better. And if you need to do a longer series of videos, breaking them up into five to 10 minute chunks, make them easier for students to do. And then maybe uh, spruces in with quizzes or other assignments in between the videos. There's tools like Quizlet where you can have a video and then the video pauses and a little quiz question pops up. There's all sorts of cool stuff out there that you can do. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I also want to encourage you, like we've done a lot of talking about Zoom as a great option and we're doing a lot of Zoom conferencing and Zoom lecturing. Um, as you think about your course going forward, think about if there's stuff that you could do asynchronously. So for instance, if I post a video and a follow-up assignment, a student can watch that video and do that assignment anytime today, right? It doesn't have to be them logging on at just the right moment to participate in the Zoom lecture. 
And given that students are not on campus, some of them might not have the best internet. So this was a lesson I learned back in Snowpocalypse. If you have some content done asynchronously, it's more likely that students are gonna be able to contribute in an impactful way. So just think about stuff that can be done um, that don't require students to be there at the moment. And stuff like this is exactly the sort of thing. So I encourage you to make an introductory video. Um, I encourage you to reach out to me if you wanna talk about methods, if you run into issues, if you have questions about what the best thing to do in a certain situation is. Um, and I'll be tuned into learning tech and tuned into IT, and I'll be there to help you navigate all of the other resources that are out there. Uh, so please do reach out, um, and I'll try to set up some sort of office hours or kind of um, conference hour between interested faculty. All right. Thanks for making all the way through the end of the video, and I'll be in touch later.